Fantastic. We're now live streaming. All right. Okay. So our meeting has uh, begun, and I will uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, and if we could just have uh, a stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Can do. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, United States of, America, of America and to, and the, to Republic the Republic for which it stands, it stands one, nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Amen. Unfortunately, pointing towards the flag gives me a side view, but no, nothing I can do about that. <laughs> um, so uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our January 4th meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the January by 4th. Sherry, meeting. seconded by Jim. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Terrific. And that brings us right to our Eagle Scout presentation. We have oh, uh, uh, Nicholas here, Nicholas Seabrick. Hello. Uh, Nick uh, was making a presentation to the Land Trust at their last uh, uh, meeting regarding a project that he would be doing on the Nickeldale property. Was that, and, was that muted at that time, too? <laughs> Ed, Ed's maybe got some background noise. You never know. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Nicholas was giving a presentation. And uh, although this is not on city property, um, uh, I thought it of value because we are going to enter a period where there are going to be impacts to people using some of the, the city open space trails because of the power line replacement project. And um, so Nicholas made a nice presentation and was looking. All right, well, let's let him hear it. Let's hear what he so, has to say. Nicholas, take yeah. it away. All right. Yeah. Um. Let me just see if I can present. This is only the host can share. Sure. Let me. Uh. Let me. Uh. uh set you up with that. Okay. You should be now able to share your screen. Okay, screen. Okay. Let's see. Do you guys see it all? Yes. Great. Okay. So to start, um, like Mr. Harbinson already said, my name is Nicholas Seabrook. I'm a life scout working towards my Eagle with Troop 28 in Shelton. And so my project has to do with the Nickeldale Farm, um, which is a part of the Shelton Land Trust, which is my beneficiary. If you don't know about the Shelton Land Trust, they're a nonprofit organization that seeks to preserve like land within Shelton you know, to preserve the wildlife and, you know, allow open space for different creatures. And with that, I go into my presentation, which takes place at the biggest farm on the map. You can see Nickeldale. So this is just a bigger map of Nickeldale. So my project's located on the main blue trail or the Nichols Trail, um, which you can see near the center of the map. So that on this, you can see a little better view. This is the, if you follow the blue trail, it'll start from the parking lot go down towards the youth camp, head back up and follow it all the way to its completion. Um, so the main part of my project is, it's gonna be like a sign hunt is what I'm calling it. So each sign is gonna have something on it. So something historical or ecological significant about the park. It's gonna have a photo of that thing in case it's not present at the time. And a QR code, which is gonna redirect to a website where somebody can learn more about this information so for the example I usually use is wildflowers because, you know, wildflowers are a very important part of our environment. So it give it brief information about, you know, the role it has in the environment, you know, why it's important that Nickeldale has it and, you know, allow people to learn more about different aspects of nature, you know, sort of immerse them into the park. So there's going to be 10 locations. Like I said, that follow the blue trail. This is just a rough location on a map of where they would locate. So you can kind of see, I tried to space them out as evenly as possible, you know, to keep people engaged as they walk along the trail. So this is just some of or the 10 locations I have. So I have like wildflowers, the stone wall, which is more historical, you know, wolf tree, the cedar stand, the campsite, um, bird and bat homes, the stream, some local trees, the, you know, the different fields of the park. And the cow tunnel, which is, you know, a very unique historical part of it. Um, and that, after this, I kind of also working on the kiosk, which is the sort of introduction to the park. So the kiosk structure itself is, you know, very stable and very, you know, still up to par. But the sign within it, um, let me see a closer image, you know, it's sort of degrading. So my idea would be to 
you know, change out the sign. Right now, it's very hard to change information on the sign. So I would make a sliding like glass thing that would allow, you know, the land trust to update the information and, you know, keep it relevant. So it's a little bit easier to reach out to people. Um, and then this is just on the back. So in addition, right now, this stuff around the area is kind of being just kind of left there, you know. So my idea would be to add back on the front um, a little bro uh, a lost and found basket. If you could also see on the right side, there's that little bin, which is kind of nondescript. My idea would be to make that like a clear plastic, plastic brochure thing so they could give out little, you know, information about the park to people that are interested. And yeah, so this is just the design for the signs. So my idea for the signs would be, you know, as weather resistant as possible, but also, you know, economical and it's good for the environment. So I was able to grab, get some cedar posts from someone I knew who had a bunch of dead cedar kind of wanted out. So there's cedar post and I would use an acrylic sign because it's good, you know, in the outdoors, it's waterproof, it's no proof, you know, it's not going to rot as bad with the plywood backing that will be placed on these signs or the post, the posts need to be six foot long because I'm digging them into the ground. Like I'm going to put them two feet in the ground. So they should be about four feet, maybe a little less um, above the surface, which is I thought was a good viewing height for most people. And then for the kiosk, you can see a little bit better. I plan on adding the lost and found basket, a little brochure box, and you know, updating the map and adding a little brick around it. And I didn't know if you saw it before, but the area around the kiosk is kind of unkept. So I would, you know, mulch the area and add a little brick wall around this. And I sort of thought that, you know, Nickeldale kind of needed some, you know, something new because it's important to me because my dad and me like to walk our dog. Um, and one of the closest places to where I live is Nickeldale, which, you know, it's a very extensive trail network. So I like to walk there with my dad. And also, you know, I know Mr. Welsh, who's the president of the Land Trust. And, you know, they sort of rely on volunteers to help out with their projects. So, you know, I sort of came with a call and chose to help them. So far, I've been fundraising for my project using a bottle drive. So I've been collecting bottles from people I know, reaching out, and also donations. So, so far, along with some help with, from the Land Trust, I've raised a little bit over $250. So that's currently where I am with the project. Right now, I'm Design or finishing up the designs like you saw before. Let me just go back to it. Just finishing up the signs, running them by Mr. Welsh, and I'm working towards you know getting them, ordering the signs and getting ready to put them in the ground. So, um, with that, I think I'll stop my screen. All right, thank you, Nicholas. Um, is, excellent. Yeah. Um, a nice presentation. Uh, again, he presented this to the land trust, and so it's on their property, and and they they endorsed it. Obviously, he's talked about uh, speaking with Joe and trying to locate where these informational uh, posts would be. Um, Nicholas, what is your uh, um, budget for um, completing the project? I know you've had some donated materials and uh, yeah. and done fundraising, as you referenced, but. Um, um, what is your budget for the entire project or how much do you have left to raise to uh, fund the project? Yeah. So my expected cost is somewhere between, I think, $600 and $700 approximately. Um, I'm still talking with sign companies, you know, see what's the best price I'm going to get. But um, right now that's where it stands. So about 600, 700, which leaves me around 300, $350 to raise pretty much, if not a little bit more. Does anybody have Jan. any questions? Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, Nicholas, uh, first of all, let me let me understand this. You're doing this project for the Land Trust, which is a private organization. Yeah. You're not doing it for the city of Shelton, correct? No, I'm doing it for the Land Trust and not the city of Shelton. And why not the city of Shelton? Hey. <laughs> um, personally, I know Mr. Welsh because his son used to be in our Boy Scout troop. So, was, you know, I already had the connection with him. So it's just easy to reach out to him, see what he wanted to be, you know, necessary with the park. And also I, I frequent the park quite frequently, or I go to the park a lot. So, right, I heard that you know. with your dad, which is great. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, but 
honestly, that means that we have nothing to do with this. Just so you're, you know that. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess we could contribute as a conservation commission if you needed to, if you got tight at the end. Uh, but probably not because it's private land trust, even though we're kind of an allied organization. Uh, I would encourage Eagle Scouts to personally do the work for the city of Shelton and, and their open space, even though I know land trust is probably potentially in need. Okay. That being said, let's move on. I, I'm a little confused. So in actuality, what are you going to actually produce? You're going to rehab an existing kiosk, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. You're going to add some, you're going to clean it up and add some mapping or some signage to it or clean it up and make it more functional, correct? Yeah, I'm going to modernize the sign because right now it's kind of falling apart. So I was going to paint it. Um, I was going to add a new back, make it like a bulletin board. So they right, can okay. update information and create an additional sign. I forgot to mention okay, on so the back. So. the kiosk. Okay. What yeah. else? What else are you going to do? You're going to do some signage at different locations, ten locations around the trail. Yeah. So the idea was I was going to create ten signs with information about you know like the ecological significance right. of you know preserved space right. throughout Nickeldale. Um, okay. Which well, include... let, let's let's talk about that a second. So when you do that, let's not just talk about, let, why don't you explore a little bit more about habitats and habitat management, which is important when you identify, let's say a wildflower area, there is a, there should be another coupled or compatible conversation that goes with that about why is that valuable and how do you maintain it or how do you respect it or how do you manage it? or how maybe it could be managed. And it can be done in one sentence or two sentences, and it, but it's important to put that into your, the whole dialogue of identifying those areas and why they're important in terms of habitat management. So you might wanna look at that end a little bit more. I just throw that out. Yeah. The second part of that is when you go to a QR code, where, what website does that go to? Um, the QR code I showed went to the Connecticut Botanical Society, which has more information on identifying different types of wildflowers and just, you know, facts about them. Does each location have a QR code? Yes, each location would have a different QR code, which is run by the land trust. And how do you, you would, okay, so it's it's a basically a website that the land trust manages, correct? Um, I would be approved by the land trust. One of them was going through the land trust, but not all of them were. Okay. So you have that worked out with them. Great. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, so that's my suggestions. Good luck with the project. And uh, I hope to see, I don't, frankly, a couple of little items that you mentioned about the kiosk in terms of a brick walk or something like that, not important at all in terms of, the viability of preparing a, a, a trail aspect and you know the functionality of pro providing a kiosk. Spend your time on educating the public on the trail use and not the, I would say the structural aspect of it and you'll be better off. That's my opinion. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Nick. Good luck with it. Uh, Ed, Mc, Ed McCreary had raised his hand. Go ahead, Ed. And just before you go, just Jim, just so you know, uh, I was the one who suggested to Nick that um, recognizing this, this is a private property, land trust property. But uh, I looked at it more as if there was any um, funding assistance or guidance, such as what you just provided to him, that would make the project better. So great. Go ahead, Ed. Um, you know, uh, Jim's comments are are well taken, but I will say the project, including the language and the QR codes um, and the signage location have already been vetted uh, by the land trust. So I'm not sure how appropriate it is for the Conservation Commission to suggest changes uh, to what he's doing. But um, uh, there, there already is language for the QR codes and they, you know, some talk about historic stone walls some talk about the fields that were there. So there's sort of what you're talking about, Jim, is just each one is pointing out something different, the type of um, 
um, you know, tree species um, and, and things like that. Um, so it's, it's something unique and certainly the, the kiosk um, looks like a relic from World War II and could stand being uh, spiffed up a bit. And, and um, I think as Nicholas himself has uh, pointed out, the, the use of Nickeldale has gone up dramatically. There are always cars parked yeah. there now at all hours of the day with people hiking and taking their dogs for a walk. It's been, quote unquote, discovered. And so spiffing it up this way, I think, is going to be fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I know Nicholas had uh, been introduced to Bruce Nichols. And so with Bruce's history knowledge of, of the farm and as Ed referenced it, um, some of the verbiage on all of these information. I didn't see any history there. Um, I think there was like he references stone walls, the cow tunnel, things yeah. like that, I think are, are, are somewhat referenced. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, does anybody else, else have any thoughts, advice, suggestions, guidance? It appears that that ship has sailed anyway because the land trust has determined that it is a done situation and that input is not uh, warranted at this time. So I leave it to Dr. Ed to resolve the, uh, make it the, a land trust project and do what it has to do. It's great, terrific. I, I do like wooden boxes versus plastic for the yeah. for the maps that's just my suggestion it looks a little more antiquated and a little more new england yeah. but you know plastic might last um longer you know wood tends to yeah that would just and also the idea was the idea was just to make it clear because right now it's kind of hard to identify what it is it kind of yeah, almost yeah. looks like a you know like a poop bag for dog so. oh oh yeah that's true you're gonna yeah um good luck yeah Thank good you. luck um do you have a deadline of when you have to complete this by yes i do um i will be able to complete the project even if i turn 18 <laughs> which is march 27th like i can complete it afterwards but for my eagle scout project like to qualify as an eagle scout i have to finish it before my 18th birthday which is march 27th of this year so i have about two months a little less Okay. Are you collecting the cans from just people or are you doing any cleanup collecting cans that way? Um, mostly it's just been collecting from people I know. Okay. Um, so like, you know, within my scout troop, within people, my friends, my family and donations from them as well. Okay. Can I um, say one more thing? I kind of agree with Jim. If you get to a point where you need a little extra at the end, you know, reach out to the conservation commission. Yeah. You know, we can make okay. a we can make a donation towards your project. Mm -hmm. We we do we do have that um, special account um, whenever we get surpluses for, from scout uh, eagle scout projects we put them in a special account and that's been sitting there for for years and years and it was you had uh, earmarked it for future scout projects but Usually the the scouts don't want to use it because they've they've raised too much money. So we do have a fund for that. Right. So I guess we are kind of a a fallback, uh, Nicholas. If if you are yeah. not able to reach your ultimate uh, goal need, uh, we do have a uh, designated uh, rollover fund, um, specifically having been used for Eagle Scout projects in the past. And again, referencing Jim, it's it's although this is on a non city open space, I think because of the um, not only the use that's occurring there uh, on the trails, but also what's going to occur when some of our existing trails are going to be closed off for safety purposes. It's going to have more usage. So um, from a real educational standpoint, as this hidden gem that's been found is referenced, I mean, I know I, I drive by in the morning at, at eight o'clock and there's two cars in the parking lot. So it's being used a lot more than it has in the past. So uh, I guess we're here as a stopgap for you uh, in terms of the funding. Um, aspect. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Good luck, Nick. Thank you very much, thank Nicholas. You. All right. Good luck, Thanks. Nicholas. Congratulations on your Eagle Scout. I'll yeah. say that before. Well, yeah. 
Thank you. So I just leave the meeting now. Yes. Yeah. Your the, your item is finished. You're welcome to watch if you want, but uh, um, it it may be uh, a bit droll. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a good it night. Is, it is a public meeting, though. So yes, you're welcome to stay yeah. if you like. Well, we'll make it entertaining. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, moving on to the next item. Uh, I have a number of items under Teresa's uh, um, bullet point. Um, not sure if we'll have um, something directly for all of them, but I was just going through from our previous minutes to add things. So um, Teresa has uh, been doing a procedure for open space violations. Um, and she has emailed it to all of us. Um, I'm not sure where we want to review it or comment on it or uh, just put it on there for the agenda to open discussion. Teresa? Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't do a procedure. I had a couple, I had basically what we have right now, which is not terribly effective. Sometimes it is, it depends. Uh, and then a couple uh, potential things. Uh, if you wanted, if we wanted to change that in the future, a couple different routes that we could take. Um, one being trying to uh, get ordinances passed, like uh, that would be similar to um, the anti blight ordinance. Um, that's pretty onerous, and I I don't really see us see Shelter going that route, but it is a, a possibility. Um, and the other is uh, passive enforcement. Uh, that option, for example, you can do something like file a notice on the land records of uh, encroachment, a notice of uh, encroachment is what it's called, so that the future uh, homeowner who might be looking to buy that property would see that in the land records and be notified that, you know, maybe the, that shed they're looking at or fence or whatever, um, they wouldn't actually own that. It's not technically a part of the property. And so that would be on the record. Um, who files that? Uh, Teresa. Well, uh, specifically at the city, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, for example, there are other notices that are filed. Uh, there's there's lots of um, notice of wetlands um, on, on the land records. Um, I don't know if John Cook did that or someone in the legal department, but there's hundreds of them. Mm. Um, some of these newer properties and, and it'll just be certain property, at, you know, with a specific address and it'll say and notice that there is wetlands on that property. That's all it is. So did we did we on some of these properties we talked about even a year ago and we sent letters out, I assume. Uh, have we had responses back or any positive, you know, results from any of that? I think we have. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking immediately of one that was on the uh, power line quarter where um, a prior property owner had infringed on the open space near the trails. And um, are you talking about the Pagusa, the one off of Independence? Yeah, the one where you had them change the shrubbery. Not, not that one. That's very old. You mean the one where, uh, where they had the pine trees planted or something, and the fence? I thought it was something within the past year. Um, yeah. There was one off no of. Um, there was one off of Independence Drive along the Pagusa Trail. And uh, Eversource or the gas company had cut the evergreens. Oh. Uh, but then some new homeowners came in, cleared everything all out, even more so onto city property, um, planted uh, grass there, actually sawed. And um, that, I did send a letter at that time. Really? <laughs> and... Oh, yeah, we didn't have to do that so yeah. Did we lose Tom? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm just on. Uh, I've got somebody in my office. So. Oh, you okay. Do yourself, Tom. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, they um they did install a fence. I had recommended that they might consider in installing a fence along the property line, and they had surveyed it. They had they actually had survey markers in there, oh. and they actually did install a fence. It, um, it wasn't a privacy fence, which would have been better, but whatever. It's a fence. Um, they, they do still have some ornamental grasses and so forth landscaping on our side of the fence. And so I had wanted to ask, uh, um, this commission, I, I think it got deferred somehow, uh, whether that was okay or, 
do we tell them to take it out or, or, or whatever? I know I bounced it off of Tom and Bill earlier. Bill seemed to think it was fine. Uh, it's up to you guys. Well, bring it up formally and we can discuss it. Uh, otherwise, no harm. Yeah, I think it, I think it got shunted to let's come up with a procedure. And then oh. that, so that got kind of swatted aside <laughs> at that time. Oh. Um, Right. So, so the question it almost is, seems like it seems like a you know pick your battles type thing. It's just a it's it's really I mean you've seen it. It's sort of innocuous if, for people, other people walking by. In your opinion, or it's a matter of it, that's one of those things that's subjective. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather you know I I'd, I'd rather we focus on the blatant, large scale. Uh. Well, there's a lot of those encroachments. The swimming and, pools. And send the letters out, and then monthly we kind of report on them so they don't get lost and they get the public record. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to do if we're talking about having a an item agenda every month on encroachments. Let's start a let's start a time frame here, and that way I think even legally it will carry more weight at some point. Okay. Not stepping on Mr. McCurry's toes, of course. Well, it sounds like Teresa, if the, that decision tree process that you have, if that had a component that uh, we would have regular um, progress or updates on violations to the commission, so that we could uh, make a decision and how maybe promptly to enforce it. I know that if we're trying to make a decision tree that automates. Well, you know, you anyway. know, I think just having a discussion about these properties in the public record and then having people maybe get get have it get back to those property owners that the Conservation Commission is concerned about encroachments on these properties may help in, you know, frankly, may help people understand that. Uh, you know, make them more aware that we're not just going to, uh, it's not a free for all to try to go and take over uh, open space uh, as a general rule. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that's what, that's kind of that part of that is kind of that passive enforcement, right. like you're talking and, about, kind of like a peer right. pressure. And right. that's the same, same, same idea as if you file a notice of encroachment right. in the land records, because you're not actually enforcing, you're just saying, hey, there's a there's there's a there's an encroachment. We right. know about it. The next homeowner will know about it. Yeah, do the right thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm all for that to start. I agree. Okay. Got to start somewhere. Well, I can. I could. You want me to look into that to see if that's something that we yeah. can do? Yeah, sure. Yeah, look into that because what you were talking about with what you know, wetlands had done is just a notice of where wetlands exist. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily a notice of a wetlands violation. No, so no, no, it wasn't. Little... It wasn't a violation. It was just there are wetlands Yeah. for the next homeowner right. who's looking to buy the property. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item I have is uh, do you have any open space violations you want to discuss right now? No, that's not something okay. I was focused on this month. Uh, next is a uh, budget for uh, next year. Uh, it is uh, due February 15th. Um, I think I had sent it to everybody. Um, let me see if I want to uh, screen share. Uh, I didn't see any line item there on Tom Arvinson's travel account for some reason. I don't know, you know. Uh, yeah, no, that doesn't exist. Yeah. It included oh. Teresa's and mine perms. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a perm. <laughs> Nor do I. <laughs> must be must be some humidity around. Uh -huh. No, I don't know about today. Um, but I was out in the wind all day. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Really. Yeah, I don't know what you mean about the wind. <laughs> um, all right. Do you see on the screen the budget? No. 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 I see the I agenda. See the agenda. The agenda. Uh, okay, so that's awkward. Uh, let's stop the share. Let me do it this way then. 
bum, 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 share screen to frankly i'm okay with the uh, budget of last year to this year because frankly i don't think we spent much so so um that's basically what i'm going to suggest in that um the the budget request be the same as last year um this is the budget request from last year. Uh, it's all similar line items. It's very awkward to prepare a budget in February for and showing how much you have spent for the year when only half the year has been done. So it's not very illustrative of if you've only spent you know twenty percent or fifty percent of your line item. It really is not a good indicator of how much you're going to consume that entire line item line item over this fiscal year. And guide you for next fiscal year but that's the way this is no goes. but i think the most important part of this is you know <laughs> the budget you know that's not our end but i i'm going to tell you that i if we have any upcoming you know if we have any thoughts on upcoming needs uh we should start to talk and put them starting we should start to try to put them in the budget now for maybe next year even so if we if that's something that all of us should think about in terms of do we do we need to start looking at some kind of capital expense so or some kind of uh, land improvement budget for surveying certain big properties uh, that that could put this whatever our budget is in jeopardy and you know a couple of good examples might be like uh, you know I understand uh, Bill is talking about renovating or restoring the uh, the dog park barn, you know, trying to do something to short up or something like that. Uh, there's no reason why, you know, our land improvement fund couldn't help with that. But mm -hmm. we, we kind of have to have an idea of what some of those items might be going down the line. So if anybody has any of those, I think it's critical that we kind of hear about it. And that's actually something that when you go to that budget hearing, you you talk to them about that and say, hey, listen, you know, we're thinking about an upcoming blah, 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 which is going to require an abnormal expenditure on our budget. And so they're prepared because I know the way it works is that you can't surprise them. So you have to you have to give them a little lead time and then pretty much we can do what we need to do. So throw that out there. That's all info. I, I, I don't know of any major projects. I mean, as an example, with a barn, when the uh, trails barn was constructed, that was, uh, you know, well supported by the administration. The only thing I could think of in terms of a line item, maybe needing um, uh, a full utilization of a line item is like the split rail fence above uh, the dam along the rec path. That seems to get a fair amount of yeah. damage every year, needs Put replacement. It in. Put it so. in. We have, we have a line item for that, um, and it's just, I'm thinking if there was a storm event, you know, and you had a lot of trees go down, and we've got a lot yeah, of them, that, you, know, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, and then that leads to, well, maybe there should be some forestry management in certain areas. I don't know. Well, there's another part of this that, and I think it's mainly, I got to talk, you know, I think it's more of a Teresa orient, orientation, but, you know, we have... You know, uh, she should have, and maybe it's in here already, I don't know, but maybe, you know, these GI, if she's dealing, she's the GIS person now, and she's got to deal with GIS. All right, I'm not the GIS person. <laughs> well, maybe you're going to end up by default just... that way, Teresa. I don't know. But if you're going to, if you, that's going to be, that's a big expenditure. And so there's got to be some way to pay for the training and the and the licensing and all that goes with it. Uh, is, uh, is your well uh, in that realm, Teresa? You have a, a licensed seat for the uh, the GIS software in the city hall. I don't. It's I. I'm not really clear the the license I have. It's not. There's different levels of license. I have this. I think like the the smallest one you can get. I know there's certain things I can't access anymore, like um, map bases that I used to be able to get to and online you know, that's things. Ridiculous. And I, we should, well, we should. because they're not doing, G basically, they're just not doing GIS anymore. I'm the only one that ever does any GIS, and it's just for conservation and trails. I know, but if you think you would use it, we should be able to support that. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. So right. if you think you can benefit the city of Shelton by some add-on 
you know, level of GIS, then we're going to do that. I mean, that's what we do. So think about it. I mean, then you don't tell us now, I mean, do a thing about it. Now the other, I'm going to throw something else out at you, at you. Remember a couple of years ago or several years ago, we had somebody do a water uh, quality analysis at, at different, uh, on different water, uh, watersheds in our, in the, in the community there. And they evaluated, I think, basically they evaluated, uh, the health of the water quality plus the, uh, I, I think there was a lot to do with the insects and everything else or the habitat around the water quality. So, uh, something like that. I, I, I love that stuff. I think that stuff is critical to, maintaining a a baseline and an informational base for seeing if our water sheds are degrading over time due to development or due to uh, exposure to certain hazards or whatever it may be and so I think it's critical we keep up with that that's that's our role I think and uh, so I, I I don't know who did that I don't know if we should I actually did. I actually did some of the did it's, uh, macro invertebrates. Is I think what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I, think I, I didn't do any um, chemical tests or anything, but there, there was. I don't remember who, if it was a, a branch of the DEP. Yeah. A, like you, were, we're talking about 15 years ago. I think. Oh come on! It was just a yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but yeah, we should. I think we should uh, reinvigorate that. Because I, we may find we might find out some things out that we would be helpful for us. Uh, at least that's I was thinking in January. I always think in January, like what's the role of the conservation commission in preservation or enhancement uh, or protection of our natural resource base? And you know that was a valuable that was educational to me. The water quality of the watersheds. I think we should you know, really pay attention to that. And I think the community would benefit from that as well. Because I think you'll find places like Bering Brook, uh, which was a, like a dump site at one point, maybe, maybe improving. I don't know. Now the chromium is, uh, you know, shut down. And that others may be degrading, like the Mill River or whatever. Uh, so... I throw I it know, out. Oh, I don't know how we get that done, but I think we could pay for it if we had to. I've been on the committee since 2009, and I could remember Jim talking about this when I, so it was before me. So it was definitely about 14 years ago or more that that was done. Yeah. So we, we, that is definitely something you have always advocated for. And we do talk about it, but we've not made any, um, decisions to go forward doing something. So we probably should start thinking about that soon. So, um, yeah, so. how to, I don't know myself how to go in that direction. I don't know how to, it's not my end of things. So I don't know scientifically how you engage somebody to do that. Maybe uh, I know, I know how to. Yeah. It's gotta be an environmental company, So basically they, they do, it's macro invertebrate. So instead of testing the various parameters directly, um, you know, um, gathering macroinvertebrates, basically bugs and things that live on the on the bottom of the river. You you collect them and then you sort through and you see which species you have. And there's handbooks for this and everything. And various species require the highest quality of water and and Whoa. high high dissolved yeah. oxygen. Stoneflies, for example, and then other species are known to inhabit uh, impaired waterways. Um, when I did it, I do remember, so uh, Farm Hill River did have, uh, I think, a few stone, one or like maybe one or two stoneflies, the, the best one, but just barely. So it was just barely hit that threshold at the time, the Farm Hill River in a couple different spots. Means Brook was somewhat impaired. It didn't have any of the most desirable species. Indian Hole Brook was actually pretty good. Cool. Um, I don't. I don't remember if any, I don't think anything else was sampled. And you did it yourself, Teresa? As I, I recall, was part you, of you, the, you, you did it with Emma, I think. If it was years and years ago. You and yeah, Emma. Yeah, yeah. She I, I had her helping me, you know. Um, 
Yeah, it was it was one of these things where I think it was the DEP and they had funding. And so they were looking for these, uh, you know, citizen scientist type things. And, and they set you up and they train you and they give you all the equipment. They give you the, the, the nets and they tell you how to do it and how to sort everything. And then after you're done collecting the macroinvertebrates, you put them in little sample uh, jars and you give them back to the DEP. Um, Great, let's and, get the high school in on this. Let's do it. That's yeah, awesome. that's exactly what I was thinking. This is like a perfect high school capstone perfect. science project. Yeah, we'll pay for it. Just do it. Yeah. Well, I think in terms of the budget, which is the line of it, we, I, I pulled up on the screen here. We do have a line oh, item for, for other outside services of $9,000. So if we needed to have a professional consultant or we need to get materials to do such studies or analysis, we do have a line item for that, which we, we really have not used that much of it. Um, you know, as long as you have a line item, it's okay. I think that if there's certain things that we would need from, and I'm not going to speak for the mayor course, but if we need a few thousand dollars to do a project that's valuable to the city, I'm sure we can get some yeah. help from somewhere. Yeah. So I guess what I'm hearing outside of not hearing anything else from the others, but that the, the budget that we utilized last year going forward as a submittal request for next year would be okay with everybody? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, Jim, are you make a motion that we submit the budget? As, yeah, uh, make a motion. Okay. And second by I'll second. Jerry. All right, I'll second by Tom. So, uh, all Sorry, in favor? Sure. All right. There all we right. go. Um, okay. you, really, you really went over on that postage budget, didn't you, Tom? You know, we did that years ago. Because that was Harriet did that. It was back ago. in Harriet's time. She always laughed. She used to mail out the budget, and mail out the minutes, and, and you can I get said, rid of that line item. That when, was, when it's uh, below a dollar, you can get rid of the line item just for your own information. Well, I was told to put one dollar in it to always retain the line item. So okay. But that's going back quite a few years. That's up to you. Um Okay, so uh, next I'll item. Paper one postage stamp soon. <laughs> yeah, buy those forever stamps. You're too late. I think the price has already gone up. Yeah, um, they did. I just bought some. Uh, the uh, next item, since we already touched on the GIS, we'll move on to naming of open space, the overlook area. Teresa, you want to fill everybody in on what social media thinks about what we should name that? Well, they think it should be named Hustonic Woods. And uh, all the other names that were suggested seem to get ruled out for one reason or another. Uh, the public has spoken. Term. Huh? The public has spoken. I, I think it's a fine name. So do I. All right. I found, I found a neat arrowhead in there uh, a couple days ago. Cool. You're always finding arrowheads. I'm jealous. Well, you know, there's more time outside, course. Sherry. I. Sadly, I do, but I'm the same person who's a member of the Autobahn, and and by the time I see the bird, it's out of the tree flying away. I saw a bald eagle today. Oh, fantastic! Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe that that arrowhead collection of that gentleman. What twenty was it? Twenty. Dorsey. John oh, Dorso. Mr. Dorso. Yeah. John Dorso. Dorso. That, yeah. That was some collection. My God. When you see that, you you recognize you can go anywhere in Shelton and find well, look hard enough, you'll find some. Those, those were time. excavated out and stuff. He kind of he kind of knew where to go. Uh -huh. he, got a, he got a lot of those from that uh, butternut hollow brook area. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, he was my uh, he was my scout master when I was in scout. Was he? So, yeah, he was. He was a really good scout leader. He did a he lot of stuff nice, up with, yeah. with him and stuff too. Wow! So, yeah, he had he had a for those who didn't know, he had a massive Arrowhead collection. It was phenomenal, phenomenal. He's in the he's in the Shelton book. It is. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You're the right. historical, yeah. Mr. Now, Dorso. Teresa, the, the Arrowhead you found because you mentioned on your post that uh, you had been up to the American Indian Institute in Washington, Connecticut. Um, that was a different Arrowhead. Oh, right. Well, that that, that how you identified it. If you ever decided on on where their home should be, that would be the place I would suggest. Yeah, um, one of Philip's favorite. Yeah, places. actually, uh, Philip Jones uh, donated to their library, uh -huh. and um, and if anybody wants to have a fun night out, they have an escape room. So um, it's no, uh, I don't do no. escape rooms. I don't either. A, that would be a fun night in. 
<laughs> <laughs> we did it actually. So we did that as a team building exercise here with the farm staff last year, and that gave us some inspiration to create our theme for the October season. So I digress. Um, so Teresa, for naming that open space, if you could put that together as a uh, as a letter to the board of aldermen to uh, have a formal. Oh, we don't have to do that, do we? I mean, we've got open space. Who's ever named Nickeldale Farm or Trombetta Woods or, you know, all these open spaces? That's just what we call them. I mean, I don't think it was anything formal. No, it it wasn't for any of our trails. The only reason I say that is I remember when Regis used to do the GIS mapping and he named certain ponds. Um, well, that home. was. <laughs> he named a lot of things on his own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think, you know, as long as everybody's okay with it, if we just started calling it yeah. Tonic Woods, that'd be fine. Okay. I'm 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 fine with that if everybody else is. That's fine. Um Bone uh the Bone Beaver. Oh boy. Any updates? No. Nope. Okay. I did get a couple of emails from um people who were wondering if we were taking it seriously or if we were just, if we knew who did it and we're just not letting on and stuff. Well, yeah, so. you know, I had some members of the press who were like, so the city of Shelton are really hunting for them. Like, no, we, we just, we, you know, I just did the blog post. I said, this is what happened. We're not sure who did it. If anybody has information, let us know. That was it. It wasn't reported to the police uh, or anything like that. I mean, what are they going to take fingerprints? Yeah, there was another letter to the editor that came out uh, after that gentleman yes. wrote the letter. So, I mean, it's it's public awareness, education, you know. Um, that was Lisa Adriani that wrote that longer letter. Jim Teradine also wrote a shorter one, but the really long um, one, that was Lisa Adriani. She's uh, a big contributor on the Facebook group. She takes lots of really neat photographs and she identifies the you know like at Nickeldale Farm and Bow Pond all over our open space and she identifies the animals and the plants really really nicely um our, our best contributor I think okay. uh recreational trails grant I'll talk before about I, this for a bit um before you go on can I talk about beavers in the same uh, sure. Sure. uh drainage area so just a little further down from Bone Woods um, a property owner before, um, to the be the east uh, of the wetlands has been complaining that their backyard yeah. has I got lots of those complaints flooding, and so um, they immediately assume it's a beaver dam. And uh, Joe went out uh, for the land trust to look to see if he could find a beaver dam. Um, and it's another classic example of, you know, their lawn is being encroached upon um, and uh, couldn't find a beaver dam. But notice that, you know, there's a lot of trees down mm -hmm. um, from just naturally falling. There's more water coming through there because of all the uh, development that's gone on in town. Um, and uh, so they apparently kept complaining. And more recently, it's, you know, reached the ears of... Um, I presume the mayor's office. Uh, I had gotten an inquiry from the uh, mayor's legal assistant, uh, you know, so what are you going to do about it? And um, I responded, we spoke to our attorney and our attorney says, even if there is a beaver dam on land trust property, we have no legal obligation to remove it. Um, and, um, you know, that's called nature. It's life. You live Mind with life. It. Um, and, uh, so, but uh, so far, no one has shown us, in fact, a picture of a beaver dam. So apparently, you know, with all the rain we had, uh, my sump pump in my basement's been going nonstop for uh, the last week plus from the groundwater getting so saturated. It's probably building up again. And so the, uh, the word comes from the town engineer's office. It's now creating a public health nuisance what's being done about it and uh, uh i don't know if he did it yet but joe on behalf of the land trust is going to reply you know and i'm i'm paraphrasing it but what public health nuisance <laughs> yeah what is that based upon you even in your letter you don't say it is a beaver dam rather the neighbors that, that are complaining think it's a beaver dam and so you know repeating what we said before 
we don't want Shelton to become known as the town that goes out hunts and kills beaver dams. So, A, no one has the right to go on land trust property if they feel they're, they have a gripe and trap the beaver on their own. Because we were being asked, would you allow them to go on the land trust property and trap the beavers? And the answer is no. Um, and it just, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't want our city to become the reputation of uh, it's open season on nature. If you don't like it, just go kill it. Do you, and, make, soccer uh, balls, do you make soccer balls out of beavers? <laughs> no, but I heard you can make um, uh, paddle balls out of their tails. There you go. Um, anyway, so Pickle the ball. whole situation Pickle is ball. very maddening, you know, and it's, uh, it, it, I feel between, because I feel this happened on Lane Street when there were complaints that some of the beavers disappeared, you know, it's just mm -hmm. yep, very annoying. Happens. And those houses you were talking about, because they were month after month over and over calling and text or, and emailing me about it was the same the same place and I kept telling they thought the beaver dam for bone pond was flooding them and I kept saying no that's upstream quite a ways and because they kept saying it's city land and it's flooding it's causing flooding they thought the river flowed the opposite direction I, I don't know I don't they just were very confused and I told them all the same thing. I, I also walked out there and looked around. I said, I couldn't find any beaver dam. I said, I said maybe some trees fell over. And also they were built, it, it's, it's just a great big hole, flat hole. And there were like five streams come together, including the Farm Hill River. And it's going to flood. They should never have built a house there. That's the, that they were the bottom line. They were dam confused. <laughs> that's the bottom line. They never should have built a house. Never Not been necessarily built. those owners. But the developer never showed that those built a house that close to the wetlands because wetlands, by their natural tendency, are made to absorb overflow of water and a go up and the water level goes down. And uh, increased development in town upstream is going to cost those waters to go up more often than not. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done speaking. <laughs> um, the, the recreational trails grant. Um, this uh, we became aware that this is a, a grant uh, opportunity and um, it was mentioned in, in, in discussion with um, Paul Grimmer at SCDC that uh, might be an opportunity um, for um, uh, using it at the river walk down uh, um, on the Houstonic River. Um, so there's been some discussion on um, how that that could be achieved and um, um, he was looking for some assistance from uh, from us towards that, since we've used that grant program in the past. Right. So I'm working with Paul and Alita. Terrific. You know? Thank you, Teresa. Um, Bill Dyer is not here for uh, the meeting. I know he had a conflict, but uh, Teresa, I saw you had the minutes from the trails committee. Is there anything you want to say about what the trails are doing? They've worked or uh, Sherry. I mean, yeah, you had a very successful hike just recently, and uh, the next one great. coming up will be the um, marshmallow. The weather, the weather, you know, it's been so warm in January, so we got quite a bit of um, work done. Uh, yeah, trails committee the last month was continued cleaning up some of the storm damage from the um, the December 23rd storm. Right. There were so many blowdowns from that. So that continued on. They spent a lot of time cleaning out... Um, the old barn and we're looking at getting that um the old barn short up bill spoke with the mayor and the mayor gave the go ahead uh gave the okay for the, the concept for it anyway um to to shore that up and put some you know proper footings underneath that mm -hmm. um i did a um a gis map that i think i passed around for um is a trail overview and it's it's meant to be printed out at 24 by 36 and uh, each of the trail maps that we have is outlined in red on that on that map of Shelton uh it shows all the trails in the open space so that'll be at the community center city hall uh and something that um the trails committee can you know mounted can can bring to their events as needed uh, do they have some of those down at city hall What's that? 
Do they have those maps at City Hall that you're just talking about? The one I'm talking about is 24 inches by, it's two feet by three feet. Correct. So it's that'll really just be something to hang on the wall. I haven't yet. I, I just ordered some frames. Um, I mean, I can either get like a poster frames or I can get it mounted at Kinko's or something, but I don't want to get it mounted on foam cardboard or anything yet uh, until I, I want to add this one for the Housatonic Woods. And we, um, I, I started flagging uh, and pre-clearing um, uh, a new trail at, at that open, at that Huntington or uh, Housatonic Woods property coming from Woods End. That, that starts at the, um, the new property that, that the city just purchased, that eight acres uh, yeah. above Indian Well. Yeah. Um, which has great parking in there. So that's um, logistically challenging in some ways. But then it, there'd be like a loop behind uh, Sinsaba Heights. Um, so you could you could access it from either Indian Well, Woods End, Sinsaba, if you if you live there or whatever, or Mayflower. Mayflower, that's a loop yeah. in there. Yeah. Teresa, and, Teresa, when you're ready, go get like five of those mounted and have them available to you put around the city, okay? Like for hanging on a wall, mounted yeah, on foam hang, cord board or what? On a wall. I would put them on that stiff foam cord, not the regular crappy foam cord. Get it, there's a there's a stiffer foam cord. You can ask them. It's uh, I, I can't remember what the product name is, but it's stiffer. It's foam cord, but it's got a it's got more of a rigid core to it. But go ahead and get five whenever you're ready, and and put them around or six or whatever okay. you need. Yeah, I just I want to add. The bigger, the better is what I'm trying to say. What? The bigger, the better. Well, it's yeah. designed for 24 by 36. Okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. I want to add the the who's tonic one, the who's tonic uh, woods in there first. Yeah. Before I before I do all of that, so I, that's why you know one thing leads to another. So I wanted to get the trail in there enough to the to the point where I could map it. So I've been doing preliminary clearing to the, you know, trying to get it so that the trails committee can then have work parties and they turn loose their volunteers and they could see where the trail is supposed to go. And there are some parts, there's, there's one part uh, I've been calling the passage where to get from Woods End over to the spot that's behind Sidzaba, you really have to go over, there's some cliffs there. And, but I, but I did find a way through that isn't too bad um, called the passage. And it's right at, you're right up above Route 110, like where they had the, the 58 car pileup uh, a few years back. Right. Um, well, I think Ed made the comment, somebody made the comment about safe passage across 110, or there was an issue about 110. So if there's a highlight or a warning that you can put on the map about crossing, I would do that too. Mm hmm um in reference to the material jim was talking about it might be i mean here at the farm we have all sorts of signs but we have done signs in what's called dye bond material d-i-b-o-n-d and it's a, a aluminum with a, a, a plastic core it's about two millimeters thick maybe three is that um, what jim's talking about might be i don't know it's a solid core mine isn't a, the one i'm talking about is not aluminum okay but but i i doesn't matter as long as it's not something that I think it's better to have it look more permanent than it is to, and rigid uh, just because it would be easier to hang and to have, and it would stay around a lot. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Or it gets beat up so badly when it's. Yeah. Rigid. And it, it kind of warps. Right. Kind of warps. Yeah. The, 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 so it's an aluminum make composite it material, what I'm talking about. And it, it, we've used it on some of the signage here that for longevity and. You, well, you when you can, go to do it, talk to Tommy about, you know, yeah. what it is and we'll, We'll do it, but do it, okay. do it right. Do it nicely. Yeah. And we just, we just have Gwen design our, you know, the graphics and submit it to FedEx Kinko's and they're able to, you know, deliver it right to the yeah. stores. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to go. Good. Great. Okay. I think that's it for trails. I, well, I, they have the, they have the Marshmallow March, March on March 4th, March 4th. And the Tamor was a good turnout. That was think, great. Yeah, I think there was 27 people. Yeah. Well, again, given how much the Nickeldale is used and the limited parking there, uh, hopefully they will. And what has happened in years prior with so many people showing up, um, they maybe encourage the carpooling activity. So, um, Ed McCreary, um, any update with the canal locks? 
Um, in, indirectly, um, the recently the SCDC uh, had its annual breakfast. So you were there, Tom. Yep. 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 And um, both Toms. And uh, long story short, um, by f- before the meeting, I had emailed uh, Mr. Grimmer and said, look, we really have to get uh, the engineers together uh, for the developer who wants to do the parcel at the end of Canal Street and the one the city's hiring. So they get their act together because the preliminary plans for the development at the end of Canal Street uh, where uh, Jim had pointed out uh, very emotionally to uh, the mayor a long time ago that, you know, you need something for parking down there. Well, it showed parking, but it was parking for the uh, development right alongside the, the, the walls of the canal. And, um, you know, kind of defeats the whole purpose of our effort to restore the canal locks and make them a historic artifact that people can approach from the rec path and enjoy. They have cars parked alongside it. Um, and uh, so at that breakfast, uh, Paul grabbed the engineer and brought him over to introduce to the developer. So uh, they chatted and said they would uh, exchange cards and said they would get together. And the developer was very cordial and you know said he will try and coordinate as best he can with the city's plan so at least the connection was made you know it, it was just to- a total disconnect up to that point in time um there is a, a another item i have further down on the agenda that interacts with that location that we maybe can talk about it again when we talk to that um the uh, um, last month we had uh, Prestige Builders um, request our endorsement or opinion on their um, set aside of a conservation easement. And I bumped into um, Ed Conklin at the uh, holiday uh, dinner and he said that ZBA had taken it up and was sending a letter to conservation to request our opinion. Teresa, have you received that? No. Okay. Um, be on the lookout for it then. And then you can reply with how we uh, acted at that meeting. Um, okay. The uh, next one I had was the Great River Water Club. Um, this is the old Murphy's boat yard. Um, and the only reason I put it on there is they have added the auto swage uh, property. And uh, is everybody familiar with where I'm talking about? Yes. Let me do a share yep. screen here. Um, the uh, the uh, the existing development site, the old Murphy's Boat Yard, which is uh, near river level grade, um, is here. And then further to the south, as you go towards the sports center direction, there's the auto swage property, which they're looking to do some surface parking and then a uh, a structure. The only reason I put it on here was I remember when we reviewed that there was a coastal area management plan that was required. And I didn't know from any of your knowledge expertise amongst you, if when the site is expanded, do they have to do a, a cam study for that additional component yep. they've added? Um, I would think so. Right. Yep. I mean, I'm not looking to put a fly in the ointment here, but um I, I watched the, the planning and zoning meetings on YouTube afterwards, and I hadn't seen that um, referenced. Um, the CAM report has to be updated. Yep. I would think even if they were to develop the original site that they had applied for with some sort of modification, they would have to update the, the CAM um, uh, study. And, and for Tom's benefit, uh, a CAM study or coastal area management plan is anytime you're working on um, a development for a site that is abutting a tidal area, um, you have to do a, 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 how that is a water related. Uh, am I kind of getting that right, Jim? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's the impact on the coastal area management, yeah. you know, to preserve the coastal, you know, environment, and it's with it typically around 500 foot setback from the mean high water mark is the 
primary impact zone. And you have to discuss all the mitigations and impacts related to it, the development, okay. what happens, what, how it may affect the water course. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at this plan and all I see is parking lot. So obviously when you have a parking lot, you have a lot of water. Yeah. And all the water is shit water, to be quite frank with you. Okay. So all that water is going to get dumped where and how. And uh, that's an interesting, uh, that's, that's a, that's a cam like flag right there. If you want to know the truth. <laughs> so uh, how is all that surface water being treated before it gets discharged into the Houstonic? Well, uh, I mean, uh, again, a lunchtime and casual time uh, relief watching YouTube videos from cities planning and zoning meetings. But uh, so I'm not really speaking for what they presented, um, but they had some galleys underneath the parking area here to uh, capture and treat the the water before it was uh, released, Um, cooling it down, obviously, from the parking lot areas as well. The only thing that that I kind of caught my eye, and this is maybe what registered with me to ask about a CAM study needing to be done for this additional component, was down here, there was a, a runoff release that the engineer's presentation kind of treated it a little bit more casually is maybe the right word. Well, the um, state is involved with this. The state would look at this carefully as well. I would, I well, would there's think. A, there's a state report that would go with this because it has there's all the volume and the size and the impact on the river and everything it's all the state has they're going to have specific requirements for the pre-treatment of the water so you, you could you could look that up yeah yeah I, I was i will say the engineering firm i forget who the name of it was but um uh they gave a very on target thorough uh, uh presentation every question that was asked of them they had a very thorough answer and uh and so on i'm not saying positive or negative about what they were presenting but just that the the presentation the, the quality of how they presented it was uh, well done um, so I, I was I, I heard bill uh bill purcell was talking to our, our group today and brought this t- this up and he made it sound you know, like this is a done deal. This is what the next thing that's going to happen. Well, they had their, I mean, the road. there's a couple of, as a developer, you know, they have purchased the auto swage property, which had substantial contamination on it. And mm-hmm. they are going to remediate it themselves with no, you know, outside city grant involvement, like things we've done on Canal Street, which is um, impressive. But uh, there must be the financial return for them to be able to do that or maybe to do it expediently and not have to wait for a grant process to go through. Uh, um, on that front, did, didn't the prior approval, weren't the buildings four stories tall? And I see this one says it's six stories tall for the condominium. They, uh, yeah, they had a, um, there's a, I mean, I, I can't do it from memory, but there was a, um, uh, here we go, rendering packet. I don't know if this is going to show them all. There was uh, a reference that the the number of buildings is less, but the size is bigger. Um, uh, It's obviously quite a big affront when you're looking at it from the river frontage. Um, Some of the PNZ members expressed concern over like this big block wall that it had some sort of, uh, you know, vegetation on it to uh, minimize the, the, the block look. Um, so there was, it, I believe the public hearing is still open. But, um, it it did, did make me wonder, um, do we have an award we could give out for the most God awful, ugliest design uh, <laughs> rendering and on a yearly basis or even 10 year basis? Because that's what this project made me wonder. You're, you're um, thinking of like a Razzie would, award? Yeah, someone would know taste style or imagination on a project facing the river and what the, they're going to see from the river just made this huge big box structure and it's you know is that what they teach you in architectural school wow um yeah i'm not uh i'm not a fan of the look um but i guess beauty's in the eye of the beholder but uh from 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 the river perspective um 
you know, I know the site has an industrial look with the, the marina and, and so on, but it's, it is water related look. Um, this is going to be quite different to that. So um, I, I don't know that it's a done deal, but uh, they have, you know, contacted the state transportation uh, effort because they're going to have to probably put in signalization where Long Hill Avenue comes into oh. uh, River Road down by Casanova. Oh, just gets um, better and better. <laughs> well, that 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 has needed for quite some time that intersection. I'm not saying that's great or not, but the other thing that's an impact for any development in this region is all of the effluent goes to the uh, Stratford um, uh, sewer treatment system. And, and, and isn't there a limit on the capacity the city still has available to it from Stratford? Because they're also proposing a fairly large, um, which I assume must be an A30G. Uh, application for a large apartment building behind the Cumberland Farms that has the neighbors all up in arms, which I think is more of a, a cram down, uh, whether the city likes it or not. But between that project and this project being increased, I wonder if we have the capacity uh, uh, available from Stratford for both projects. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of paraphrasing what they made in their presentation, but I guess they have already done that uh, analysis or recalculation. The city of Shelton does have an agreement with the uh, Stratford Sewer Authority and uh, the gallonage that is uh, able to be sent their way. Uh, we are under that um, threshold and this development would certainly take some of that capacity, but it would not take all of its capacity. Um, and then the other development you referred to, yes, that is an 830G um, application. Uh, it'll be mid-February and it's behind the Casanova restaurant, um, technically fronting on Mustang Drive where it meets Long Hill Avenue. And yeah, there's a neighborhood community of Pine Rock Park that's gonna be um, opposing it. So. I guess my question was, did the engineers for this project mention whether there'd be enough leftover capacity for a similarly sized project, as I recall, 90 units or something for behind Cumberland Farms? Um, I can't recall from memory okay. the presentation, right. but there are other sites in that area that have to be developed. The owner of the Shelton Sports Center has purchased the Wynn Nelson property and does have an application, at least it was in the inland wetlands level. I don't think it has reached planning on zoning yet to do uh, a development there that was going to have some condos, apartments, a grocery store, and a medical office building. Wow. So yeah, there are certain capacities that could quickly be reached and you don't wanna be the last one to get into the barn before the door closes, you know? So, or you maybe you do, but you know, I, I hear what you're saying. There's a capacity there for development uh, that might restrict other property owners from being able to develop their property to the highest yield that they desire to. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's a little bit beyond it, but I was really, I, I think what I'd like to do is uh, have the conservation write a letter to planning and zoning uh, asking uh, about the coastal area management study, because I did not hear that mentioned at all during their meeting. If that's fine, I can send that off to them. Good. So moved. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, the uh, take, take Cedar. <laughs> Let me do that one. Have to take a vote on the motion. I, I uh, so um, take a vote on the motion for conservation to have write, write a letter to PNZ regarding the Great River um, development uh, and seeing the coastal area management study for the amended parcels. Aye. Aye. Great. Aye. Um, and if Teresa, if you could just send that to Alex, that would be great. Wait, you just said you were going to do it. Okay. Um, so if, well, if you could just write a, a, a memo, I'm just going to be a little occupied over the okay. next month. And wait, who seconded that? Uh, I think Tom seconded it. Um, the next one I have on the screen is the Cedar Village at the Locks. Um, so uh, this is a, uh, let me get a better site plan here. Uh, this site plan works better. Okay. So this is at the uh, end of Canal Street where the locks are located. And I kind of referenced this earlier uh, about um, the river walk and doing a trails enhancement grant. You know, we, we felt that the application for that would 
kind of terminate before you got to this property, but this is the current application and it's quite disappointing to me, I'm sure to everybody else, because all the effort that the city and us have put into seeing that the rec path be a, a proper scale that uh, two couples could walk opposing to one another, maybe 12 foot wide and have some fringe area with landscaping, um, that seems to have been lost on this application. Um, and looking at the scale of it here, um, this is, uh, I think it was about six feet. Um, but what's more problematic is when it comes, sorry, I apologize for skipping around here, but when it comes down towards the canal, and the locks, they have it uh, uh, coming along here. And then to achieve the grade to bring it back up to Canal Street level, doing this funky switchback uh, half oh. a dozen times to bring it up to the Canal Street level, which is nowhere near in keeping with the vision that the city plans showed for a river walk. Um, uh, plus it's just a budding right up against this structure of this being parking surface parking here underneath the structure above. Um, and it, it just is, it just boggles my mind why the planning and zoning staff in all of their tech sessions would not have discussed the city's needs for this, uh, location, particularly with its prominence to the locks as, not so much a terminus, but uh, as a high value special interest location in a walking loop or a trail that's going to continue farther down perhaps the train line. Uh, this is going to be a real central feature location that with this kind of presentation is just uh, relegated to uh, uh, being lost. Um, it's kind of disappointing, not kind, it is disappointing. So, um, we have not been asked to give a referral, we have not gotten a letter from planning and zoning, but I feel it's of the, the nature given our involvement with the river walk and its proximity to the natural resource of the, the river and all the work we're doing on the locks that we should be making a comment. So, um, I just put that out there to start the conversation. Uh, Tom, if you would uh, send me a link to those plans, um, I, I feel like I I should call a meeting of the the subcommittee that was created by the uh, Economic Development Commission and say, look, we got to go to the mayor. You know, I'm sorry, I worked on this thing for two years interviewing engineering firms and, and stuff, and, and only to have the whole concept ruined. It just boggles my mind. And uh, I, I, uh, I can say I did have a, a Zoom meeting with uh, regarding the recreation grant for the trails enhancement. And we, we kind of came over towards this area and uh, I express, expressed my dismay about it. And uh, um, I, I can certainly send you the link. It's pretty easy and it's all Google Docs and you can pull them up and um, look at them a little closer like I am here. It's um, it's disappointing. It's disappointing also from planning and zoning to not have had uh, some encouragement to create more public space here. Um, currently, the applicant is an option purchaser for the property, so it's still owned by uh, Mr. Watts. But uh, and it has, uh, you know, it has remediation issues on the property and all that. I get that. But uh, um, there's a public need to uh, for enjoyment of the river uh it's view shed and so on and, and it's something that has been guiding us all the way until now why, why are we giving up now it doesn't make any sense we've learned a lesson from one of the developments along the river that the 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 river walk butting up right against the building with you know kind of the the brutalist architecture as we're referring it to uh it, it's just uh it's not the same it's a uh, it's a mistake and uh you know we need to have a, a more open, natural, welcoming, um, enjoyable for passive use feel to this river walk. 
not that you're just a glorified sidewalk pushed up against a building and a guardrail. It's, uh, this doesn't work for me at all. So The irony of them using the locks for the name is, can't be lost either. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like every development. Yeah, it's old dairy estates that used to be a dairy, or the hidden meadow that's no longer hidden. It's a uh, um, um, Fox Ridge. Yeah. So, any other thoughts? I think we should have um, um, a, at least a strongly worded letter from the commission to express our disappointment with the application as it relates to this river walk component. Agreed. <clears throat> agree. Um, I agree with that. I'm not sure th this goes beyond an area that uh, is brackish or tidal that requires a coastal area management study. Is that right, Jim? Or am I mistaken? Are we too far up the river that that kind of state review doesn't occur? Uh, that's not going to, that's, that's immaterial to this. Okay. Just thinking out loud since we discussed it in the last one. The commission needs to write a direct and pointed letter to planning and zoning, explaining the weaknesses of how this project is how is basically against all the planning efforts over the last which is has faulted all the planning efforts to, of the city over the last well at least since 1990 mm -hmm. and that every master plan that has been endorsed by the mayor and the city and SEDC uh, has preserved a corridor that would allow a suitable river walk of no less than 10 feet and originally 25 feet to terminate at the canal locks to a public park. And I feel is that planning and zoning has done it, will do a big disservice to the city of Shelton if they don't allow some type of public open space or public access to the river with all the related amenities at that location. And I, I make no, I, I repeat it, the mayor knows it. Um, I'm pushing as hard as I can in different venues to make that happen. Uh, but it, we need to just keep reinforcing it. And honestly, someone's gonna have to confront planning and zoning directly because they obviously are not, they just don't get it. So I think that'll happen but it has to go through planning and zoning. Uh, the mayor will probably not get involved in the planning and zoning matter, which is, which is a difficulty. He would support it. He would not stand in the way and he would support it, but he's not going to- uh, Be out in front leading the charge kind of thing. Yeah. Correct. I just brought up the other site plan and just to kind of get a reference of uh, the, the width um this brick area hatched area is what they show as the the walkway and further back from this line to here is uh it seems to be 11 feet so that's showing you know six feet maybe uh five foot. it's a five foot walkway along there that they I mean, show. that's just that's unconscionable well you know there's more to this than that as we all know and i yeah. we don't need to get into it tonight yeah. but the bottom line is there's a a drastic failure of the retaining wall that's part of this property. And I, I don't know how that's being dealt with, but it has to do with remediation. There's always, there's failures of structures there. There's been years and years of contamination there from, from the land use of oils and greases and car bodies and refrigerants and you name it. It's there, okay? And uh, so if it's like any other parcel that I've been involved with, all the way from uh, SpongeX, every one of them has had monitoring wells and long-term remediation. 
and contamination earth, which is still down at chromium process. So this is not, this is not going, this is not a, to me, this is not a valid plan. This is a, some sort of exercise in, I don't know what, but it just does not make sense to me. So I guess we have to get to the bottom of it. And uh, I, you know, that's, that's happening. That's, we're trying to, that's trying to, trying to, trying to understand that. So uh, uh, what I heard from Ed initially was that we need to write a letter to planning and zoning. I think we've covered a number of talking points from what Ed has said, what Jim has said. Um, it should be strongly worded. And sure. Teresa, if you could draft something and then we could all review it and then um, then get it sent out to PNZ promptly. I'm okay. not sure when they're extension of this public hearing will be well it should go to everybody it should go it should go to everybody you can think of yeah i agree because they have to know that this is being in my opinion comes a little bit in the back door yeah. they're trying to get something you know they're ignoring the past planning efforts of the city to try to uh you know facilitate a development because it's topical now to develop this and somehow or other they think they can get this done and I don't really care about what our planning consultant says. I think that uh, I think the planning consultant needs to retire uh, shortly because he certainly doesn't understand what planning efforts have gone into the downtown over the past uh, 30 years. You would think he would have gotten it by now that there's a river walk. How could and, he get it? He doesn't even know. live in town anymore. So. So it's time that I guess we start reminding people or the community that the city is getting taken advantage of here in my opinion. I mean, uh, you know, th those aspects aside, you know, one of the benefits we have as a conservation commission that doesn't have to run for re-election every cycle or whatever is the longevity. You know, I've been here a while. Ed, Jim, you've been here longer than I have. Teresa, you've been involved with Trails and Conservation as a member in prior years and, and all, I mean, we have this knowledge of, you know, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, and that intellectual capital that we have um, should not be wasted. This is the time to leverage that to say, these are plans that um, you may be a new alderman, but here's something that the board of aldermen endorsed as the plan for this area. You may be new to planning and zoning, but this is something that has been a, a planning guiding document for this entire region of canal street development. And, and it's our it's our duty to remind people of these items that are supposed to be long living guidance documents. Um, I, I think that's that's one way to approach it. Um, yeah. were, were you going to make a motion for this or? Um, Ed, are you making a motion to write the letter? Ed makes the motion. He's nodding his head. Um, Aye. Motion and, uh, um, second by um, Sherry has got her hand up first. So Sherry's first. Um, yeah, I can comment. I just can't. I can't. I understand. Uh, yep. Uh, all in favor, write in the letter. Great. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Um, um, next item was uh, oh, the open space dedication. Uh, on the uh, there was I'm two. Getting Ill. Get that map off the screen. Yes, yes, <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, the um, when we were talking last month to uh, AJ Grasso for Prestige Builders for the um, the two lot um, split, um, he referenced the Gamble subdivision uh, that was approved by planning and zoning, and he is actively doing the site development. But he mentioned that the open space dedication, um, the mayor or the, the city council hadn't decided how that open space parcel should be received by the city or maybe the land trust. So, um, Teresa, could you follow up to see that that piece of open space dedication from that planning and zoning um, uh, approved development is dedicated to the city as open space or what, why, why would it's they be status. to go to somebody else? 
I don't understand. Talk to Alex first. But I mean, there was city open space to one side and then there was some land trust nearby it. But I think it, it should really go to the city rather than the land trust. Um, that was what that was approved. So I don't know why all of a sudden there would be a delay. I'm glad that uh, uh, AJ brought that up. I mean, would you be opposed if it went to the land trust? If that's what the aldermen want or whatever? Uh, well, you know, if it's going to be deed restricted to be preserved, it doesn't matter to me. But then the land trust as the grantee would have to say, yeah, we will receive right, it. Right, right, right. I don't think they would have a problem with that. Is it because uh, they have the they have the abutting property? The land trust doesn't yeah, have but property. You can't just out of the blue say, hey, we're going to give you property. The person who's receiving it as ownership has to agree to want to take right, it. Right, right. But if, if the land trust, you know, wanted the land, it. The land trust did agree. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh okay so it but it's still i don't know that any deed has been filed yet so i just it was just just weird why all of a sudden it was interjected that hey the city doesn't want to take ownership of it give it to the land trust why why would they do that i don't understand it's not going to gain you any different tax revenue so um and i don't think there's any pending applications that uh we need to discuss with beyond what we had on our agenda. Uh, open space trust account. I sent an email to the um, uh, person in finance who had given me the update in the prior. Uh, I only sent it earlier this week, so I didn't expect to get a reply back this promptly, but just wanting to let you know that I requested a status update on that. Um, quality of life list uh, for the overlook uh, property that we recently acquired. Has that deed been filed? Yes. Okay, great. And then there is a parcel in South Shelton with a, a small Christmas tree farm. I uh, don't have any update on that. I, um, I, I have a short one. Um, Mark commented at that also at that SCDC breakfast um, that it looked like the city was going to acquire it after all. Um, so that, I, that, that's it. Not, not to go long into it. There's a lot of, a lot of work behind the scenes to try and accomplish that. So. I, 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 there's, there's no there's no abutting open space or trails or anything that we can work on is there that that if that happens um not directly. not directly but it does it does at its corner comes to the rear of the um the clappic farm the two okay. clappic parcels that came down it'd, there. Make, okay. it'd make a wildlife corridor but i don't yeah. know about trails Agreed. gotcha Okay. Um, uh, comments by members. Um, yeah, this is another one with SEDC. The Long Island Futures Fund grant, uh, um, Paul uh, Germer sent that my way as if I had any opinion on it. And uh, it's a grant to try and um, improve the water quality of Long Island Sound. And um, I referenced that uh, our our catch basins and such should be um, maintained a little bit better. And that, I don't know if there's anything in this grant that helps to uh, a study on that or uh, public awareness and such, but that was my suggestion to him for that uh, particular grant. Um, um, but we're into comments by members. So I'll start with Sherry. Sherry, um, anything to uh, add? Well, um, did everybody get a, um, email in regards to the Wylands National Mayor's Challenge, or was it just me? No, I did not see that. Okay, I'll, I'll share it, but it's basically about, um, I think globally maybe there's a big push for water conservation because my friend Jamie's daughter's also at Bard College and um, she sent me a link to the watercalculator.org and you can answer questions and it will tell you exactly or roughly about how much water you're using. So after filling my questionnaire out, I did really well. We don't use a lot of water. So I, was, I knew that, but I was impressed. I'm glad that I passed. And um, yeah, that's just about it. This, this is, it, it's interesting. It's the National Mayor's Challenge for water conservation and there's links on how you can do it. But I also got a phone call from them because they knew I was on the Shelton Conservation Commission. So um, 
I'll, I'll share it with everybody. I'll send it okay. to everyone. And that's it. Everything else is it's good. Yeah, pretty good. Tom Wilson, what's going on? Not too much. Long meeting, so I'll keep it short. Uh, and uh, just it was a good meeting today. And Teresa, I do need to point out, I saw you on the trails a few weeks ago. I don't know if you recognize me. I had I the black, you. black and white dog. Yeah, yeah. That no, I knew it was you. I, I couldn't. Oh, but I had, I had to because my thing. I have a I have a dog that is uh, fear based aggression. Yeah, so I, I, can't I, I, linger I apologize. And that mine a dog was there, and, and my dog could see your dog was off leash, so I just had yeah. to get out of there as fast as and possible. I had just taken her off leash, so I yeah. apologize for that. She, for, for and, and because your dog was bigger than mine, my dog is he's just a nut job. He, yeah. He, I'm just constantly apologizing. And I think as soon as they came up, I said, I apologize in advance. No, my, dog, me, I, my, my dog was off leash. So, well, she stays right with me. But anyway, I, we just let her frolic for a little bit in the water. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Ed McCreary, what's new with you? Uh, <clears throat> that's nothing. But everything, everything I have to report, I, I've reported. That's about it. Okay. Mr. Tate. Uh, I think I did the same. Thank you. Teresa. Clean sweep is coming up in April. So oh, yeah. I, I ordered more patches this year than last year because uh, we ran out last year. The patch this year is a, um, a red trillium. I have a different design every year. Oh, a trillium's a nice birch bank, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the website's all up to date and I have the new online registration form. So if anybody wants to sign up and say you're going to clean up an area, it's all set to go. Well, when, when the, the farm in the spring, once the snow has receded, well, it's kind of a <laughs> misnomer right now, um, we do clean up on Walnut Tree Hill Road. I try to take a note of uh, how many bags we've cleaned up and I reported. So you have that added to your yes. summation. That's a big help. The, the biggest item we find, nip bottles. Nip furs. Mm -hmm. A lot. I think my theory is that they throw them out the window and beer cans uh, along the farm because there's little chance of a a, a a garage camera or something catching them in the in the moment. Oh know? no, Tom! They're all over. They're yeah. everywhere. There's no. There's no. Uh, special everyone thing. in every street that picks them up thinks it's just their street. Uh, they blow out of pickup trucks, which is what I, which is uh, a problem of a bottle like that. It, hmm. it, 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 apparently it's susceptible to blow out of a pickup truck and <laughs> i've seen it and it, it just kills me but they're all over you can't stop that's a sale that's a sale item i think that's i don't i don't know what to say well there is a deposit or not a deposit it's actually a fee on nip bottles and um so that money comes back to the municipality in which those nip bottles were sold. And right. the town of Shelton has its maximum allowed number of liquor stores based on the census population. So we've got several thousand dollars. Uh, we're getting about 30,000 a year. 30,000 a year from, 30, that's how much is it per nip bottle? Five cents. Do the math. Oh, do the math. It's a lot. <laughs> A lot. A lot of bottles. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, everybody's got a price point, I guess. So <laughs> um, on that note. Um, all right, everybody. Well, I uh, I will look forward to uh, seeing you next month, the time of the Wednesday meeting. I will be uh, perhaps zooming it in from Switzerland. So. Have a wonderful <laughs> trip. Yeah. Yeah, have a night. I, I, I may be zooming in from Banff, Canada. So there we go. Wow. <laughs> I'll be zooming in from Huntington, Connecticut. <laughs> I'll zoom in from Bridgeport. Back and, and, and to be I'll honest, I probably won't it. zoom in from Banff, Canada. But uh, yeah, uh, if, if, honestly, if it is, if I know it's going to be complicated, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. With the time zone, for my time zone, it'll be when I'm still. Yeah, I'll be out. six hours ahead of you. So. Banff is lovely. Enjoy yeah, it. I have been there in the summer, but I'm really looking forward to being there in the winter. Yeah, honestly, now that I'm thinking of it, I'm going to be six hours ahead of you. So um, <laughs> not really looking for a 1 a.m. kind of Zoom meeting for conservation. So um, next month's meeting may be deferred. 
So, I mean, Teresa could run it if she was so inclined, but, uh, you know, you would miss my eloquence. So, <laughs> uh, with nothing else on our agenda, we stand adjourned. <laughs>